When a vessel moving through the water is exposed to wind, the wind also influences and affects the vessel. Um, if we have headwind, we will headwind we will typically go slower. If we have tailwinds, we will go faster at least to a certain point, and particularly if you're a sailing vessel. Uh, and if you have wind in from the side, you will be pushed sideways, as we see in the animation here. Uh, the wind force on the side of the hull pushes the vessel sideways through the water, uh, causing our uh, course to change. And the influence of the wind on our course is called leeway, and it's measured in degrees, and the size of the leeway is determined by the following factors. The wind speed, of course, uh, the area that's exposed to the wind uh, on the vessel, windage area, in relation to the vessel's displacement. Um, you can think of a very, very lightweight speedboat, uh, hardly any displacement at all, whereas you have a relatively large area above the waterline. Compare that to a submarine, very heavy, hardly anything above the water when surfaced. So um, this also influences the, the size of the leeway. The hull shape, uh, generally, if you have a deep keel, you have less leeway, whereas uh, compared to if you have a flat-bottomed vessel, which has more leeway. And then, of course, your course in relation to the wind. You have the wind uh, from the side, from the front, from the stern. And the vessel speed. The faster you go, uh, the less leeway you have. Uh, and leeway means that we're pushed sideways through the water uh, by wind and waves. So if we have a true course, in this case 290, we have a wind from our starboard side, causing, in this case, a 14 degree leeway. Meaning that our course through the water, in this case 275, 276 degrees. If we have the wind and sea from starboard, leeway is then deducted from our true course. Whereas if we have the wind and sea from the port side, leeway will be added to our true course. Uh, if you have tasks like these, draw up the course and the wind and the compass rows to get it right. In this example here, we had uh, 14 degrees of leeway on a west northwesterly course for north northeasterly gales. Um, Leeway is uh, determining the size of the leeway you can do by taking a bearing of your wake. If you see that your wake, uh, you have wind from the side and you see that your uh, wake is not the continuation of your center line but it's skewed off to one of the sides, if you can measure that angle, that is the leeway. Um, so leeway is based on, uh, it's experience based or based on uh, taking a bearing of your wake. Current, water that's in motion, uh, is another factor that influences the course that we actually end up making good. And the direction of the current is indicated in the opposite way uh, as the di direction of the wind. We say that the wind blows from a direction, whereas the current sets in a direction. So a northerly wind means that the wind comes from the north, whereas a northerly current means that the water is moving towards the north. This is just something you need to uh, remember. Now, the speed of the current can be called the current drift or current rate, uh, while the direction of the current is often called the set of the current. For instance, the current sets in 250 with a rate of two knots. This means that the water is moving in a direction 250 at a speed of two knots. So every single molecule of water in one hour will move uh, two nautical miles in a direction 250. This is easiest to take account of if you're going with or directly against the current. For example, if you have one and a half knots of counter current and a log speed of eight knots, you just subtract the speed of the current from your uh, speed through the water. So you'd be ending up with a speed over ground of six and a half knots in this case, uh, whereas if you have the current uh, going in the same direction as you, you just add it. So in this case, you would then have nine and a half knots speed over ground. Um, if the current comes from the side, you have to use vectors in order to find out how to compensate um, the um, effect of the current or how much it affects our course and speeds. Um, the calculations on, on uh, these vector calculations are outside the curriculum for um, D6, but you have to 
nevertheless understand the effect and be able to compensate it even if you don't make the, uh, the, the vector calculations. So we have an example here, you had a compass course 060, deviation plus 4 degrees, which gives you a magnetic course of 064, you had a magnetic variation minus 4, so you have a true course of 060, uh, you have wind from the uh, north-northwest, um, causing a few degrees, let's say five, 5 degrees of leeways, which means that you have a course through the water of 0, 065, um, which we see is 0, 065. Then the current uh, sets in 280 with two knots, which causes you to move in that direction. Even though through the water you move 0, 065, then the water itself moves in that direction. And um, if you did the vector calculations, you would be able to uh, determine how many degrees this would alter. Um, your course causing you in this case you would see to understand to uh, end up with a course over ground of 0 057. Now you need to understand how the current will affect your course and speed. Uh, where the current is known you can calculate how much you need to adjust your course to compensate the effect of the current. Um, so even though we don't do these calculations we need to understand how the current will affect us and how we can compensate.